I'm here again with Anthony Scaramucci, who is the founder of Skybridge Capital. Anthony, cannot thank you enough for your time. The fund of funds model is under a lot of pressure these days. How are you guys dealing with that, and how do you view that industry going forward in the future? Oh, I mean, you know, listen, the, the, the narrative, it's always interesting about life, like I watch these political candidates or any topic, there's a certain narrative, there's a certain stereotype, and then the, then the question is, is that matching the reality of what's going on? And so the fund of funds narrative is that it's fees on top of fees and it's uh, offering no value and uh, I can go and do it myself and all this sort of nonsense, okay? But the truth of the matter is that that's not the case. So the fund of funds business, if it's managed properly and executed properly, is a terrific business. Mm -hmm. uh, this business has gone from a billion dollars of uh, discretionary assets under management to $11 billion in five years. Mm -hmm. Uh, while the industry is contracting. Okay, so the superficial narrative, I think, is a false narrative. Uh, our business is about being the chief investment officer for somebody on their fund of funds, uh, on their hedge fund portfolio. So we are rebating to our clients because I can go into somebody with a billion dollars now or uh, $800 million. I can pick up the phone and a high profile hedge fund manager can say, hey, I can give you a billion dollars. I don't want it at two and 20. I'll give it to you at one and a quarter and 17. Do you want it? And all of a sudden you're getting that bulk price. And in terms of um, starting a fund of funds today or starting a hedge fund today, you've got tons of regulation, you know, regulations going on uh, or you've got really a big regulatory environment, I should mm -hmm. say. Um, is it still doable? Can people do that? Do young people have the opportunity to look forward to starting well, well, we both, firms like we you both, We both know the answer to that. It's way harder. It's, 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 this is not a business that I could have started in March of 2000. I started this business in March of 2005. Three people, no assets under management, in a cube downstairs in this building. Right. In March of 2015, there's no chance I could have started this business. The first nine employees would have needed to have been lawyers or compliance people mm -hmm. just to handle the regulatory rubric. Our regulatory costs, which have not made any investor safer, has not benefited anybody, are up 4x since the advent of the Obama administration. And so this is a fantastic thing for Skybridge. Mm -hmm. it's, a fan it's even better for Goldman Sachs or for Bank America, but it's a fantastic thing for Skybridge because you are eliminating all the potential competitors that we could have. And so what will happen is because when you have left-leaning strategies that are overly burdensome with the regulation, you create a lot of fat cats. Right. So all these left-leaning strategies that are designed to help people and then lower and middle class actually hurt them, eliminates jobs, creates a hard time to create new businesses. And so the great irony of this stuff is that you're going to make me richer and you're going to make all of my peers richer that have gotten their businesses started. Right. And you're going to get it nearly impossible for other people. So I would like to change that, even though it's against my interest. The best interest of Skybridge, regulate me more. Well, let's segue into your views on politics right now. Um, you know, you're obviously talking a little bit about your industry, but what do you think is broken in this country and what do you think needs to be fixed and how are we going to do it? Well, listen, we've ceded the country to the political class. And so this is an indictment of both parties. And, and so uh, these people are not stupid. They're very self-interested. And so they've looked at the map and they said, okay, let me district myself in a way where I can have all my friends in my district and I'll keep my enemies in the other district and I'll stay in power. Well, that's a super smart thing to do if you're a self-interested person, right? Super smart thing. So that's what's happened. We've strained out all of the potential adversaries. And so you have right-leaning districts, you have left-leaning districts, and, uh, and they have an interest, a collective interest, in fighting with each other so they can maintain their power. So we have to figure out a way to reform that. A lot of people have asked me, do you think that you will ever go into politics? You've done everything else. Why do people ask you that, actually? I've never heard of that. People want me to go into politics? They've just talked about the fact that maybe you will. You've done everything else. You've, you know, you've been in finance. You've written books. You've oh, well, done I hope to God you're not wishing that on me. So, yeah. so look, I mean, I don't see myself as a politician. I have my own business. I, we created this business from scratch. I put my blood, sweat, and tears in this thing. Uh, it's like a family member. We've had two near-death experiences here as a result of a financial crisis, right. and I would like to stay running this business. You know, Somebody asked me the other day, do you want to be Treasury Secretary? 
So I looked at the guy, I said, hey, look, okay, if, first of all, I'm not experienced enough or qualified to be the Treasury Secretary, but if Scott Walker asked me to be the Secretary of the Treasury, he doesn't have the judgment to be president, okay? So, so for me, I'm a fairly realistic person. I don't say any of that with false, false modesty. You know, I, I see myself as an entrepreneur. I don't see myself as a politician. Let's talk a little bit about uh, Wall Street Week and yeah. how, how that came about. And uh, it seems to be doing really well. And, and um, what, what's that experience been like for you? Well, again, more accidental stuff. And so uh, uh, somebody uh, by the name of Jeff Salkin had actually bought that brand from PBS, mm -hmm. uh, put it up a website and did some uh, web videos. Uh, and it didn't seem like it was going in the direction he wanted to go. And he came and contacted me. And he said, listen, what do you think of this thing? I, said, I looked at it. I said, well, listen, you know, if, uh, if we took it over, we would take it over in a monumental way. I'm not going to just take it over. We'd have to hire the right team. We'd have to hire the right editing group and all this other stuff. And so, so he sold it to me, him in con conjunction with PBS, right. sold us the website, the Twitter feed, the Facebook page, the likeness of Louis Ruckheiser, the theme music, and the film library. Uh, and so we bought that, and then now we got to put it on the air. And so how do you do that? Uh, you're looking at people that started a television show without a television network, without a marketing budget. And so how do you start a television show without a network or a marketing budget? It's not easy. you got to really be creative, right? And so what we did was we said, okay, we're going to make it ourselves. We're going to buy studio time, and then we're going to buy the air time. And then somebody says, okay, well, you're an infomercial then because you're like proactive acne. I said, well, no, not really because we're making this a very high journalistic standard, high quality show. We don't market Skybridge's products. We're not interested in doing that. You got the graduating class in front of you and these kids yep. are coming out and they're, they're all excited and they're trying to figure out what to do with their lives. What sort of advice would you give them? The, the number one most resonating advice is do not listen to your parents. That's the number one resonating advice. You got to follow your inner voice and you got to follow what you think you want to do. In my heart and soul, I always wanted to have my own business. That was my number one thing. If you had asked me at age 11 when I was delivering Long Island Newsday to middle class housewives all over Port Washington, uh, what I dreamed about was having my own business. When I went to law school, I actually thought I would be a solo practitioner running my own business. And so I always wanted to have my own business. And so, so I'm have my own business. It's been ups and downs. Some of it has been terrifying. Uh, some of it, uh, you know, I wear, probably shouldn't tell your viewers, but I'll tell you, I wear a plastic mouth brace from the 1998 Russian ruble crisis. My first business that I sold in Newburgh apartment, ah. I started teeth grinding when the market imploded in August of 1998. Right. And I've been wearing that mouth brace ever since. And so some of this has been terrifying. Yeah. But I followed what I thought was the right thing for me. And yeah. so you want to live longer. You want to be healthy. You want to stay young. You want to be vital in your life. You've got to follow your inner voice, okay? If, uh, if your mom wants you to be a lawyer and you don't want to be a lawyer, don't be a lawyer. If your mom wants you to be a dentist, you know, Lee Cooperman's mother wanted him to be a dentist. A dentist, sure. Right? But I think he probably... Yeah picked a better choice. He's a billionaire running a eight or ten billion dollar fund. That's what he wanted to do, you know. So so that's my resonating message for a kid. And lastly, we know you for all the things that we've mentioned in terms of the SALT conference, in terms of Skybridge, in terms of investment banking, in terms of the books that you've written and all that good stuff. What do you do with your free time? What do you do outside of all this stuff? Well I have four children I love very much. Um, I'm not a golfer, unfortunately. Because there's some beautiful golf courses that are there. That's yeah. fortunate. That's, that's but a horrible pro game. Pro 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 probably is for my family, right? But I'm not a golfer, so what do I do with my free time? You know, David Rubenstein, who's the founder of Carlisle, has an interesting sign on his beautiful Nantucket home. On the front of the home, as you're walking up to the home, it says, rather be working. Okay, and so I am not at work. I am doing exactly what I want to do, which right. is building relationships, helping people with their money, uh, uh, focus on the employees here, helping their make their uh, actualize their lives. And so I don't really view myself as working right now. So when I'm not here, uh, what do I do? I'm a big reader. I try to do a ton of sports outside of the office, you know, whether it's 
with a trainer or it's out on a basketball court or stuff like that. Um, I spent a lot of time traveling, uh, traveling for business, certainly, but also traveling for, uh, you know, I'm more of a sightseeing traveler and a get a vibe of the place sort of thing. Um, but I'd like to tell you that I had this like really exciting life outside of work, but I don't. I like going to my house, hanging out with my kids and my wife, and I like, uh, you know, I like being in the suburbs. You know, I've never lived in, I lived one year in the city, 51 years old. I've only lived one year in the city because I grew up in the suburbs. I'm like a hometown kind of guy, and I still have my buddies that I went to high school with, you know. Again, I'm here with Anthony Scaramucci, who's the founder of SkyBridge, uh, and Anthony, cannot thank you enough for your time today. Oh, it was really, a really a pleasure to have you in my office. I appreciate it.